January 5th, uh, 2018, I was at home and I started having chest pains, severe chest pains. And um, w what I had learned through my job was symptoms and signs and I was having just the classic symptoms of a heart attack. So uh, severe chest pains, uh, radiating pain down my left arm, um, my jaws hurt. Um, so I told my wife, I said, we gotta go, we have to go. Chuck Stoddard had long been acquainted with the emergency room at Moses Cone Hospital. A veteran of the Greensboro Fire Department, he accompanied many patients to the hospital. But earlier this year, he experienced firsthand what many of those past patients had before. His primary nurse noticed that his color wasn't great and he had some, you know, he was a little diaphoretic, sweaty and everything. Um, got him hooked up to the monitor immediately and the doctor actually went in there quick and said, I'm going to call a code STEMI on this, on this patient, um, which means, you know, an acute heart attack. Um, so I decided I would go tell the secretary that we needed to page that out. So I go down the hall, I got about halfway down the hall and I heard his nurse yell, he's in VTAC. We put him on our defibrillator pad, shocked him. The doc actually the doctor um, initiated CPR. And after that one shock and a minute or two of CPR, he actually woke up and requested that he could get his hat back. Um, by that time, the cath lab team had made it down and we were able to you know, get that treatment plan in process. So. The experience was a traumatic one for his wife also, who had come with him to the emergency room. In a critical situation like that, I would say 99.9% .9 of the care was, you know, focused on him. Everybody was concerned with making sure he had a pulse and making sure, you know, we didn't lose him right there in the room. And I remember standing there and everything was going on. People, um, we had one nurse, you know, working on giving him meds, one nurse charting, um, one nurse operating the defibrillator, um, the Zoll. And I looked over and his wife was in the corner and she just looked, you know, traumatized, obviously. I don't know how you wouldn't be. And so I took a minute, I said, are you okay? You know, and pulled her kind of outside. That way she would still be a part of what was going on, but not right in the middle of it. And luckily about that same time, the chaplain had just arrived. So um, she was really able to dedicate, you know, all of her time to making sure that she had exactly what she needs. Mr. Stockard and his wife were so grateful about how they were treated that they decided to come back in April to say thanks to the emergency department staff. The ED team, um, of course, saved my life and uh, then the uh, nurses in ICU were really good. Uh, took great care of me. ICU team were very awesome. It turned out that one of the nurses was a neighbor, and um, and now the rehab team, they're awesome. Um, uh, they work with me. I'm here uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every week, and they uh, have you hooked up to a monitor and monitor your heart and constantly checking your blood pressure and uh, there's so many people in there that, you know, it, it's, it's a great thing, so. Sometimes I think we see the patient in their most critical time. I mean, I'm surprised he actually remembered a lot about the experience. I couldn't believe how much he remembered. Because um, a lot of times, you know, we see him so quick. Like I said, he may have been in the treatment room for 20 minutes. So I wouldn't have so much expected him to remember all that went on in that brief amount of time he was with us. So. Mr. Stockard is also finding he appreciates life more. Everything, just everything, on a daily basis. I mowed my yard today, <laughs> you know. A lot of firemen came here uh, when I was in ICU. They were bringing fire trucks by here and coming up. And, well, the last time I saw him, he was in much different condition than he is now. I mean, his color, he was gray. I mean, he scared everybody. I didn't actually know at the time that he was a fireman. So 
it was after he went to the Catholic, they were like, oh yeah, he was a fireman, he knew something was wrong, you know. Um, so just seeing him up and moving and talking and living a pretty much normal life, you know, that outcome could have been completely different had he have not gotten here when he did. So, very rewarding.